Well, good evening and welcome to INTV's coverage of N NWOAL football. It's Friday night, October the 12th, and we are the guests of the Evergreen Vikings. Uh, I'm Rich Badorf, and doing color tonight with me is my old buddy, who usually does basketball with me, Stan Cruz. You are scraping the bottom of the barrel tonight, aren't you? Well, you know, you were about the 12th person I called, so anyhow, no, that's not true. We're enjoying, uh, enjoying the beautiful new facilities over here at Evergreen. It's uh, just north of the big house on County Road 6, and... Uh, at Pfeiffer Field and Stanley what kind of uh, record are we looking at for both teams tonight well the Evergreen Vikings two and five one and four in the NWOA un under uh, third year head coach Paul Teakin and uh, Mark Emmons brings his ball club in still in search of that NWOL championship it's in their uh, it in their control with a four and one record Wasion currently four and three overall uh, big important game though going on just the other end of the county here tonight will make a big determination on what happens with who has a chance at this NWAL title as Archbold takes on uh, Patrick Henry over in uh, Archbold yeah that's uh, gonna be a doozy you you got your radio you got your uh, son-in-law is gonna be listening to that right for yeah, us. I, I will put Tim on that <laughs> Tim's over here the uh, Vikings, um, they come off a victory, what, a week ago, two weeks ago. Did they, they got their first one of the season, I think, uh, over Ottawa Hills, if I recall. Indians basically a uh, couple plays away from being five, or um, what we say they are, four and three. Four and three, four and one in the yeah, league. Yeah, six. They could very easily have been six and one, uh, except for a couple of plays against uh, Napoleon and um, tough one against Liberty Center. Yep. Uh, see if they can uh, reprise that running attack of uh, we witnessed last week over at Wasion uh, when they put three rushers over the century mark. I think two of those at halftime and. Uh, Huner, I think, what, had four carries. He was close to the century mark at halftime. Yeah. Well, we've settled who gets the ball first. It'll be the Indians. Evergreen will kick. And takes the hop. That Ryan Huner. No, it was uh, Colin Hughes. It'll be first and 10. They'll mark it at about the 37-yard line. Wasion will move west to east here. What breeze there is tonight as we look at the flag almost hanging limp Just in the western end zone. Justin Rodriguez at center leads him out. Derek Schrock at quarterback. Colin Hughes. Track is here, tackled by Brad Leffler. Brad Leffler makes the stop. Nice penetration that time. Leffler getting penetration off the right side in there to uh, pull the runner down. Okay. Colin Hughes has uh, been a touchdown machine the last few weeks. I don't know exactly how many he's got, but I think he scored four last, didn't he? I think he got four last week and four the week before that. Just one wide out here for the Indians. Straight ahead, nice, nice big hole. Mitch Huner steps out of a tackle, and they're not going to catch him. 64-yard touchdown jaunt. Good power run there. They looked like they had him wrapped up, but he just yanked that leg away from that defender. Stepped out of that hole right at the line of scrimmage. I mentioned nice hole right there, but then he was able to move through that. And once he got to the Jets turned on, nobody could run him down. That always helps the statistics. Yeah. One carry, 63, kick in the air, and good. Clay Simpkins nails the extra point. And Wasian 
on the second play from scrimmage. Scoring drive, as Mark Schnitke would say, two plays, <laughs> 67 yards, 53 seconds. Actually, less than that. <laughs> we might mention, Rich, that it was homecoming or is homecoming here tonight at Piper Field. But I was remiss in capturing the homecoming queen's name. I'm sure you did look that up. No, I did not. We need they, to, Nobody brought us over programs or anything here, so. Are you picking on the administration? No, 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 no. no. Kevin Stong. And Ken Jones, they they treated us well over here. We just they didn't give us the queen in her court. I'm sure I'm sure we can we can. I'm sure Tammy will run off and, and get that for us that information. <laughs> Clay Simpkins to kick off for the Indians and deep for the Vikings. I think number four, Jordan McCready, and 17, Chad Mossing. I know I'm getting old, Rich. I can't get the binoculars to work through the trifocals. <laughs> Simpkins has been kicking them deep. That one will be taken right at the five-yard line. McCready. Nice move. We got flag. a penalty flag. It may have been enhanced by a push in the back. Tackle made out there by David Brown, number 69. Strong return. Currently marked just inside the 35-yard line, about to 34, but we'll see what this Make call is like by he, the officials. Looks like they signaled a hold. And that is the call. Holding against the right. Going to be a 10 yard walk off from the spot of the foul. That'll move it back inside the almost back to the 10. He'll put it down. I think we'll call it the 11, maybe the, the 12. Evergreen going to huddle right on the ball. Oh, coming right out. Go taking maybe a little, trying to speed this game up a little bit. And see who, what the number on that was. <clears throat> for McCready, McCready, Jordan McCready. And after McCready, it's for a yard game by a host of Indians. It'll bring up second nine at the 12-yard line. You got McCready. <laughs> Single back. Pitch sweeping to the right. Good defensive play. Trying to see who number 64. They credit Emmons with a tackle on the public address system, and we won't argue with that. Alex he Emmons. To, he was quick to that one. Yep. Loss of about uh, one yard on that one. Bring up a third and ten. Once again, four, single back, man in motion, a and a lot of motion somewhere. <laughs> Second penalty of the night coming up, I think, against the Vikings as they move back to huddle in the end zone. Should be a five-yard walk-off. Take them back to about the six. Whoa. Uh-oh. He's counting with his... Oh, They're this, trying to... This, this is not good. <laughs> Next come the shoes. Yeah, here we go. Third down, 16. Pitch. Wasiong again getting outside pressure. Everybody up that time, they read it well and read it early. McCready picked on all four th three times that time, let alone the kickoff, too. Yep. Brings out the punt team. 
Long snapper, I think, is Corey Robertson. Lucas Pennington, number 88. Ooh, high snap. Gets it away. Just lazily turns over and takes an evergreen bounce across the 40, moving towards midfield, and it'll die just outside the 45, make it a, we'll call it even, and call it the 45-yard line. Pretty decent punt from uh, recovery from a bad snap. He got it up. Gave his team a chance to get down. Yeah, when you're back there in your own end zone, you got to get rid of it in a hurry. And with that snap high, he did a good job. Second possession coming up for the Indians. They'll take over at the Evergreen 46-yard line. Again, the single back. Colin Hughes in motion. Mitch Huner. Work before it might work again. McCready on the on the stop. Mitch will move forward for a gain of about five yards. They'll put the ball right down on the 41-yard line, so it just short of five-yard gain, we'll call it five. Well, that hurts your average. Oh, yeah. For Mitch. He was averaging 64. He's down, he's down to 34. Down to 34 now, yeah. Colin Hughes in motion, cuts it back nice inside. Nice hole, nice cut. He read the block well at the corner, cut inside of it and turned it upfield, finally pulled down to the 30-yard line. Tripped up by Lucas Pennington. But a first down for the Indians. About the 32-yard line, so give him nine. Last few weeks, uh, Wasan's running game has been uh, very strong. Over the middle. Good pressure, nice throw, and nice catch out there by Colin, Colin, Colin Price. Price. Schrock gets up a little gingerly as he got hit right after he threw that one. Pick up the six, second down, four. Brings first up pass. second down and four. First pass attempt of the night for the Indian truck. Just a little off target, but still acceptable. Hauled in by a nice catch by Price. Seven yards on the pickup. Hughes, Hughes and there's a flag. And there's another, another flag. Play for the ball carrier. Second by Pennington, flag on the play. Reaction of the Evergreen coaching staff. Is it's almost not, like it's going to be called on yeah. the Vikings. Face mask and hold. Mask Offset. The Vikings holding Replay the down. Offset. Still second down. So it'll be still second down and four. 7.15 to go, first quarter. One of those rarities in high school football, a do-over. Yeah. The Indians leading 7 to nothing. What? The Indians leading 7 to nothing. Oh, these, not, Indians. these I thought, Indians. Where did no, you get a score that quickly out of Boston? <laughs> <laughs> I, know you, I know you're an accountant, but I have to watch you for the, you getting po there, messages from above. What is this? Colin Hughes <laughs> takes that one. Gains about uh, almost two. Brings up third and two. On the Viking 24-yard line. Definite four-down territory here for Wasion. We got a different look there. Hughes behind his blocking backs. Got a good push up front by the right side of that line. Moved him forward, moved it to a first down. They'll spot it right on the 20, it looks like. Nah. It's across the 20. It's got to be a first down. And they have moved the sticks. Yep. First and 10 from the Viking 20 for the Wasian Indians, not the Cleveland Indians, Stanley. Okay. Mitch Huner finds a hole. Horse collar down as he gets to the 10-yard line. Chad Mossing 
decides he's going to take him high. Should Didn't be just short. To. Should be just short of the first down where he's got it marked. He's just outside the ten. Yep. yep. Second down one. Second and one. Indians ground attack starting off well, Rich, right now. Seven rushes, 91 yards, and they're pounding on the door. With still 535 to play here in our first quarter on top. The Wassie on Indians, 7 to nothing. Hughes cuts back inside. Hughes, the ball carrier. Back by Luffler. That'll bring up a first and goal. Third first down on this drive for the Wassie on Indians. First down. From here, I'll call it the seven yard line. Yep. Give Hughes four on that carry. And already they close in on the century mark. Hughes again. Big haul. Nice blocking out there. Andrew Roop occupied the corner out there and uh, Colin Hughes seven yard touchdown run is that what you officially give him yes I do well the left side has been good Simpkins to the Indians the point after. Simpkins out of the hold of Colin Hughes and the official on the far side throws the flag, and now the referee decides he'll join the party. It is the, it is the autumn season, time to get the yellow and orange out. There you go. It's amazing when one of them see it, they all see it, and then there's the one that nobody sees. <laughs> They're explaining options to Evergreen. Illegal procedure. They're going to do it on the kickoff. On the kickoff. I'm still not a fan of this deferred penalty stuff. <laughs> Either you get it now or you get it later. I mean. Anthony Stidham to snap. Colin Hughes to hold. Clay Simpkins to attempt the extra point. Nice snap. Handled well. Probably the two the two uh, kickers get all the glory, get all the shame, but uh, the guys who do the snapping and the catching back here and the spotting, uh, it's a quick dance, and you must do it perfectly to give your kicker a chance, and that was well executed. Yes, everybody has to work together on that. <coughs> so Wasion takes a early 14 to nothing lead with just five minutes to go in the first quarter. Once again, nine plays, 45 yards following the uh, defensive stop that set uh, the Wauseon Indians up once again here tonight. They got off on a good start like that last week, Rich. The yes. defense, The defense holding them back inside, forcing a short punt. Took over and drove it down the field. The five-yard walk-off puts the ball at the 35-yard <laughs> line. Going to test Simpkins' leg. I hope that wasn't us. No. I think it was Paul just touching a wire up there. That's what we brought Tammy one here the, to one of those back big, it up. One of those big, big inch-and-a-half yes. di diameter wires. Line drive. McCready takes it at about the 11. Met head on. A little more definitive move up the field that time, but he was still met with the same results. But this time, the Evergreen Vikings will start a little closer to where they uh, intend on ending up. The return is just to the 30 yard line. Last time they started drive back on the 11 after that uh, holding penalty on the kickoff. Yes. Evergreen currently three rushes, no yards, with 4.45 to play here in our first quarter. Corey Trucor, the quarterback for the Vikings. Still Drops. got it. Nice, nice pitch and catch. 
At number eight. Steve Creaky. Steve Creaky, yeah. Complete to Williams for a pickup of the yard. Second down. Are we seeing somebody different than they are? I, we obviously must be. <laughs> Just a short gain. About two, but more importantly, it, it, it's, a positive, yeah, it's yes. a positive play for the Evergreen Vikings. Bring up second and eight. Sweep, whoa. Mossing in the backfield. Chad Mossing met. You know what I miss, Stanley? The poll? No, the, the instant replay that we, we get well, accustomed I, to. I, it I show up, we, you can't afford me and instant replay. And instant replay. Tammy, Tammy rode along. We didn't have room then for the equipment. So, you could have uh, rode on the roof. I know, this is why you bring me along. That's it. Third down, nine. You need the abuse. Evergreen tried to get something started here. So far, the Wauseon defense has been quite effective, and here it comes off the corner again. Trucor that time, nice move to adjust, get away, but he's going to be, I think they're going to mark him just short, and they will. Lucas Pennington uh, came back to make the catch. Boy, they gave him a favorable spot there, Stanley. That's about where I would, that's about where I would have marked him. He left his feet. He left his feet this side of the big white one, and that's about where he received the ball. Okay. Who'd you have on the catch, Williams? Pennington. Pennington, number eighty-eight. Official timeout for measurement. And he's going to be short by half a yard. Assuming the guy that did the stripes did them all straight. Wasn't any relation to the guy who does yours? <laughs> Tell me about it. Half a yard short. Where did I hear that? Is that an echo? It must be. I see. Bring up fourth and one. They're going to go for it. Corey Trucor. Under Brad Leffler at center. He follows him into the hole. <laughs> nice play. Good quarterback keeper by Trucor. A bit of a chance, though, for the penetration that Wasion's been getting. They've been getting good leverage up the middle. That time uh, they, uh, they read and reacted to it, but Trucor with that little uh, jab step, able to step into the backfield and move forward, pick up the first down, the first first down of the night for the Evergreen Vikings. Move the ball out to the just outside the 41 yard line. So give him two on the pickup. And finally, positive yardage for the Evergreen Viking running attack. Four rushes, two yards. Little high snap pass. Coverage out there by Jeff Jasso for the Indians. 2.37 to go, first quarter. <laughs> with the clock stop, with the incomplete pass. Well, I on everybody up inside of 10 yards right now. Mossing. Mossing, the ball there, pick up the four, third down. Gain of about four, third down and short six. Move the ball out to the 46, so keep it even, give him five yards. Fifth rush of the night, seven total yards. Third and five at the 46. True core. Back to pass. Bubble, Bubble screen and nice. Jason Williams. We nice, work. nice play. You know, you, you, we only get over here every two years, but 
there's a voice that you always remember. <laughs> Stadium announcer for the Vikings on his Viking first down. Eight-yard pickup, they move from 46 to 46. Straight ahead, Mossing. Caught a little bit from behind. Hard yardage that time for the sophomore. 6'1", 165 in the listing. Tackle by Emmons and a host of other Indians. Second down. Credit to tackle to, uh, to Emmons. And I think Terry Lynn was in on that in two. Number 72. Saw him wrap his arms around him. Pull him backwards. <coughs> One minute. Tommy Paul checks in. Replacing Ryan Salisbury. Williams split out wide, as is Paul. Double slot that way, and they turn and hand it McCready. off. And McCready is just you know, grabbing like the, the ball might have been loose, but uh, the referees aren't reacting as if it was. Nick Amos, one of the Indian tacklers. And Terry Lynn. Loss of two. Well, do you watch that bubble screen again from the opposite direction? If Wasion is in that tight of press coverage, it's going to be, it's dicey because they're, 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 the, they're up on it. Yeah, they let look, the clock run out. Yeah, they will. Two seconds, one. That's the end of the first quarter with uh, Wasion Indians leading 14 to nothing over the hometown Evergreen Vikings. We want to thank the following donors who provided funding for the coverage of the regular fall sports seasons on INTV. Wasion Machine and Manufacturing, St. Casper Catholic Church, Perfumes and More, Wood Trucking, Delta Fraternal Order of Eagles, Wasion American Legion Post 265, Wasion Athletic Boosters, Wasion Homecoming Committee, Trinity Lutheran Church, the City of Wasion, Winchester's Restaurant and Saloon, Don's Automotive Group, Lee's Body Shop, Bill's Sports Center, Hallett, Hallett and Noggle, Attorneys at Law, Sterling Mechanical, LLC, Heating, Air Conditioning and Plumbing, Whalen Realty and Auction, Mr. Mike Murray. Without their support, we wouldn't be able to show you these student athletes in action. So uh, stop in, thank them. And some of us have to pay to get in. Did you? Huh? No. No, no, I vaulted more fences than. I was going to say, you're. Tis. You, you can walk up to any fence in northwest Ohio for an athletic event and just lie, lie with the best of them. I should run for high elective office. <laughs> Everybody trying to keep this drive going that started back at 30 as we move into the second quarter. Ryan Salisbury in motion. Trucor comes outside. Nice. Ooh. Oh. Well thrown. Pretty well defended by Hughes. Trucor's pass intended for Williams. Incomplete. <laughs> Williams Jason just couldn't pull that one in. Well, do the Vikings punt this one? I think they do. That was a 10 play drive though, which uh, is important for the Vikings yeah. to, to establish some kind of a continuity here and some kind of get the defense off the field a little bit. Once again, heavy pressure up the middle and once again, he roots one out of there high in the air and it takes once again, the evergreen bounce. Moving inside the 20, about to the 15. So once again, effective punting. Very good punt. Inside the 20 yard line is what you want out of your punter. See where they eventually do mark it. Watch the guy put the stake down on this side. He stabs the ground just inside. Ooh, make it clear back at the 14. Yeah. And the guys running the, the board in the west end zone agree. Their binoculars must be better than yours. <laughs> Derek Schrock. Gives it off. Hey, 
Is it Huner? Ryan Huner. I've seen enough. This year. Maybe I can letter it was you on this year. I'm, I'm getting. I can. I can tell them part by size. <laughs> there you go. Ryan, his first carry of the night, uh, picks up a strong, uh, oh, full six yards. It's been good for the Indians. They've got a good running back four. Straight ahead. Huner, nice Huner. spin that time. Runs over a couple of Vikings and moves the ball out across the 30-yard line. They'll mark him just beyond the 30, probably at the 31-yard line. So give uh, Ryan Huner, or make that uh, <coughs> Mitch Huner 11 on that carry. And he was tackled by number 11, Garrett May. First and 10 on the Viking 30, or on the Indians 31 yard line. Handoff Hughes. Hughes, right at the corner, nice tackle there, wrapped up. Hughes ball there, tackled by William. Jason, Jason Williams. Williams. Williams stood his ground that time, and uh, Hughes has been known to run over a few people. Williams that time stood his ground, wrapped him up, pulled him down just across the 35 yard line. Keep it even, call it four yards on the carry. You know, what we ought to do is just uh, use your cell phone and get Martin on the line. You can just do the, the game, you know, and then you don't have to call it back in. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Mitch Huter. Once again, Mitch slugging inside the tackle. Leffler with a tackle. <laughs> Give him three on that one. Yep. Third down and four on their own 37. Viking defense stiffening. They get slugged pretty well in the first play from scrimmage and then have hung on and, and hung out pretty well. Collins. Moves, he's going to be just short of that first down. About a half a yard short. Hughes. Brought down by Brad Leffler. Fourth and a short one. Yeah. Coach Emmons. Fourth down one. Gonna go for it, it appears. Well, he hasn't had a negative play yet, and he goes full he goes uh, power eye and Hughes running hard and finally, whoa. Mossing comes out of there with a football, but uh, the officials say, young man, I'm blowing him dead back here at about the 44-yard uh, line. Who was the ball carrier on that one? Colin Hughes. Hughes. That power eye formation has been productive on two plays for the Indians. 132 so far on the ground tonight. One of one in the air for seven. Schrock rolls, throws, intended for Jordan Weber. And very happy to have that one find the green of the grass instead of the green of the evergreen Vikings because it looked like Trevor Poole had designs on uh, pulling that one in, but when he went to apply the brakes, the cleats went out from under him and he seated himself at the 45 yard line and the ball landed at about the 42. Well, I strolled out there on the turf, and um, it's a firm field. Colin Hughes behind blocks. Ooh, stumbles. That's one of those that could have been a knee right there. He lost he lost traction just as he caught, and they're going to mark him just enough for the first down. The 45. He saw some open daylight over there towards the Viking mm -hmm. sidelines and he cut towards it and uh, like you say that knee could very easily have got tweaked on that. Eight ten to go. First half. Indians, Wasion Indians lead 14 to nothing over the Evergreen Vikings. Mitch right straight ahead. 
battling, running hard, and uh, the defense stand up there, and here comes a late flag in from the back judge. McCready on the stop. He throws it to the point of the tackle, so maybe we're going to get a face mask. I think that's what it is. I think it was the five-yard variety. <coughs> well, it has to be pretty evident for the back judge who was somewhere around Metamora when he threw it. Maybe even Fayette. And they're marking off five, though. Five. Huner was running hard right there, and, and, the, and the Evergreen defense stood him up. They'll give him three on the carry and five on the penalty. And up second and two, and there's a big hole. And here comes this back judge has got an arm, bud. Ryan Huner this time. We've got a hold on. Boy, I, I thought he got him horse collared him, didn't, didn't you? As compared to the face mask, I'm not sure. Now we've got we've got Paul upstairs running the camera, and I know he's got that the uh, the ability to test guys' eyesight. Uh -huh. We should run this guy over at halftime and just have. Uh, Paul, get your tickets out. <laughs> With it all settled out, it's going to be first and 10 at the 21-yard line. Evergreen must have taken the timeout, did they? At the 22. 1-0-9-3-6-7. 1-0-9-3-6-7. Tonight's 200 Club winners. Your checks are in the mail. $200 goes to John Hudick. $100, Greg Rainey. $50. So give Ryan 10 on that carry? Back. Yep. $25, Charles Hunt. And $25, Jim Dowling. Want to thank the city of Wauseon, Winchester's Restaurant and Saloon, Don's Automotive Group, Lee's Body Shop, and Bill's Sports Center for providing some funding for tonight's contest. 11th play of this drive coming up for Wauseon. Sidestepping in there a little bit was Mitch Huner. Huner. Just sort of hunt and pecked and twisted and That's jockeyed about, his way through the a crack. That may have been the most timid run I've, I've seen that young man <laughs> ever accomplish. Gained about four, second down six. Ball on the Evergreen 17 yard line. 7-17 to play in our first half here. Wasion on top, 14 to nothing, and flag. He threw it in the direction of Wasion, and what he says, offside. Technique, gentlemen, technique. Dead ball encroachment, as Mark would say. Offside. Encroachment. One of those new politically correct words. You can't say offside. Yes. It's been about their fourth penalty this drive. Um, yeah. A couple of them were face masks. Yep, the third. Five for 30. Second down, short. I have to use offside here in my notes because I can't spell in You don't know how to spell no. it. It's too long. No. <laughs> Give me some numbers I can work with, but don't ask me to spell anything. Schrock takes a snap. Gives it to Hughes. And There's a flag straight ahead. And I think this is going to be holding on Wasion just with the bravado that the referee fired that one in there. And he's, but he is talking, he is talking to the Wasion quarterback, Derek Schrock. Oh, he was, no, he was talking to um, Alex Emmons. Chop, chop block. Mm -hmm. Do you want to explain what that is? 
He was engaged above the waist with another blocker, and somebody nailed him below the, I don't know whether it's below the below waist. Below the waist, waist then, yeah. yes. And you also can't stand a guy up and then chop. There's, there's and we've got to find a spot for this ball at about the, what, 28-yard line? Yep, just to, just the back end of the football touching the 28. Second down, about 15, 16. Schrock, keeper, and I know where to go. They must have seen that on film someplace because uh, it did not fool them. No. And that, I think, is the first negative play other than penalties for the Wauseon Indians tonight. That penalty on Wauseon was their second total of 15 yards. Brings up third down and 20. Look for your tight end or look for Colin Price deep. <coughs> it can't be Colin Price because he's not out there, so. <laughs> he hung it up and he's got good coverage. And intercepted by Mossing. Mossing stayed right with him, ran inside, used his size, got a little leverage. The receiver couldn't get around him, and he was right there to pull that one in. Showed good hands on that one, good concentration, stayed with it all the way. He was trying to get it to Andrew Roop. And uh, Chad Mossing had just a little bit more height on him, and like you say, the inside position. So first turnover of the night for the Indians. The 547 mark of the second quarter. <coughs> Makes Rock one out of three with one intercepted for seven yards. McCready cut down out there by Emmons, Three, Alex seven, Emmons. After a short game, second down. Yep, you gained about a football on that one. We'll keep it even, call it no gain. Stymied is the uh, stymied. Uh, stymied. That's one of the little rascals. <laughs> is the Evergreen uh, rushing game right now? Eight rushes, seven yards. Second ten, just outside the twenty-yard line. Well, they had put on a good drive the last time they had the football. They did. McCready in motion. First back through. I think that was Creaky. I think it was an eight. Number eight, wasn't it? Steve Creaky. Brings up third down and probably eight. On the Vikings 22 yard line. Mm -hmm. 22, 23, somewhere in there. <coughs> Nice pass by Trucor. Salisbury on the Ryan Salisbury on the catch. Comes up a little short. Brings up fourth down. Fourth down. And four. Logan Pennington or Lucas Pennington in the punt. Boy, Wasion's been close three times now. Oh, oh that's the touched. football. That was touched by an Indian. Ryan Huner, I think, uh, had it come off his hands. First down Vikings at the Indians 40 yard line. Pennington's punts are, have been very high. Gets them way up there. Gives some great punt coverage. To the it does, and, and Evergreen, Evergreen gets down and under it. And once again, Evergreen hurrying to the line of scrimmage. Trucor launches a long one. Ooh. Williams tried to sell the pass interference on that, and I'm not too sure sometimes during the year that that isn't called right there. Yes. If you have a strong passing team, I guarantee you that that's one of those that is called. It's gonna he be sold it nice. As Tammy pointed out to me, it was Jeff Hasso 
we've always called him Jasso, J-A-S-S-O, -S -S but she says it's Hasso. So we'll have to correct Mark on that when he mentions his name. I will leave that in your capable hands. Okay. And I'm sure you'll send him a bill. McCready with finally running room on the outside, and he's met right there and knocked backwards. The Wasi on Indian sideline reacting to that one. The stick right there by... Uh, well, it was Hasso right there. Yeah, Hasso. Knocked the J into the H. There you go. <laughs> McCready, his first real uh, chance to show anything at time, showed a little speed, got to the corner, got a little leverage, picked up four yards around the outside. Third down, six on the Indians' 36-yard line. Mossing, McCready on the comeback. Running up, battling, give him credit. He's been slugged a couple times tonight. Got out of the grasp of Mitch Huner and uh, <laughs> that doesn't happen too often. No, picked up a couple more yards. Give him about three on that one. I don't think they'll punt this time. I wouldn't. Fourth down and three from the Indians, 33, oh, just outside the 32-yard line. 2:45, and I think we're going to get a timeout. Timeout. Their second timeout. Timeout, Vikings. Second timeout. Once again, Mr. Baddorf, would you like to enlighten those people out there watching on INTV, the people who make this possible? Yes, some of the people, Trinity Lutheran Church, Wasion Homecoming Committee, Wasion Athletic Boosters, Wasion American Legion Post 265, Delta Fraternal Order of Eagles, Wood Trucking, Perfumes and More, St. Casper Catholic Church, and Wasion Machine and Manufacturing, Wayland Realty and Auction, Mr. Mike Murray, Sterling Mechanical, LLC, Heating, Air Conditioning and Plumbing, Hallett Hallett Noggle, Attorneys at Law, Bill's Sports Center, Lee's Body Shop, Don's Automotive Group, and Winchester's Restaurant and Saloon. What's that? We're getting... Out of town scores. 21 7 in favor of who, Stanley? Patrick Henry. Patrick Henry. Pressure coming off the backside. If he can get it away, and he does. Nice attempt out there, but it's just thrown just a little wide. Good, good try. By Williams. Wasian stiffens and takes over on downs. True car guy, pretty good leverage that time, rolling out. Uh, had good form, just, uh, just had it drift a little bit on him. Or otherwise, uh, Evergreen uh, was had, good, had good yeah. potential of picking that one up. So the Wasion turnover leads to no points by the Evergreen Vikings, and Wasion turns them away and will take over at the 32. Yep. Just across they the lost, 32. They, they lost a yard by turning the football in for end. There you go. Watch Elias Sports Bureau try to figure that one out. Big hole up the middle. We've seen this before. Huner. <laughs> and that time... Uh, Mitch Huner gets it out to the 47. We've seen him make the same type of move, trying to break free, find the opening, and lost his footing, slid down. Was he on the line of scrimmage before they get the chain set? Colin Hughes wrapped up. <coughs> Timeout. Wasion. I think Lucas Pennington on the stop there for the Vikings. Wasion's first time out. 2.09 to go. Second quarter. Give him almost six on that? Yep. Almost six, yeah. It's got to be statistically, it's more than five, so it's uh, got to be six. Need to have a seminar on that sometime. Oh, you're going to get me started on these, aren't you? Yeah. My Come favorite, in. my the, the play that I still can't figure out is how, and I watched it, I watched it four times last night on the college game. Say the line of scrimmage is a 50. Kid runs to the 35-yard line for 15 yards. They call holding, 
They market, mark it back five. They get the down. They get the down over. They get most of the distance. I, you don't understand that. No, one, huh? no, 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 no. Well, that's what comes from a spot foul. I didn't go near the dog. <clears throat> Wasi on out of the timeout. Man in motion, and they give it to the motion man, and that's Huner. Oh, uh, Hughes. Hughes. Colin Hughes picks up the first down. Gain of about uh, <laughs> six to six or seven. S give him a full seven. Well, they marked it just outside to 40, so we'll call it seven. Two minutes to go in the half. Wasion <coughs> out of the huddle quickly. Schrock looks. Throws this away. Good decision that time Very by Schrock. Good decision. If he'd have held on to that or tried to complete that, uh, he could have. I doubt if it would have been a, a pick six, but uh, there wasn't a lot of opportunity to drop that one in. That would have taken one of those linered throws against Notre Dame two, three years ago. <laughs> he just kind of dropped it through his arms and into somebody, but that was not the case, and a good decision right there. 107 seconds to play in our first half. Wasion on top, 14 to nothing here on INTV. Well, you always cool. put you always put me to my mathematical tests when you say 107 seconds. Got her from behind. Good pull down right there. We'll Number 65. Corey Robertson. Corey Robertson. First by Carter. And who was the ball carrier? Third down. That's a good question. I was thinking it was uh, Mitch Huner, but I'm not sure. Uh, I think it was. Later tonight on uh, my other job, Mitch will get credit for that. He'll get credit for that one. He'll get credit for picking up a yard, too, moving the ball down to a third and nine at the 39-yard line. 185 yards in the first half for the Wauseon Indians on the ground. <coughs> Only four, one of four in the air with one intercepted for seven on the other side of the football. Evergreen, 11 rushes, 16 yards, four of eight in the air for uh, the quarterback, uh, Derek Trucor. And he's picked up 21 yards. Big thing, uh, a bunch of penalties for Evergreen in the first half. A pair of face masks and a, uh, a couple of other ones. Five penalties, 30 yards, two penalties for the Wauseon Indians, total of 15 yards. Ball mark ready for play. What's the odd single back? Shotgun. Goes oh, wide, he's got wide open. Colin Hughes pulls it down at about the 16 yard line. The defender got himself turned around, didn't see that the ball was had been lofted over towards the sideline. Actually, actually, he made a pretty good decision because we, you had single coverage out there with twin receivers. Yep. He started to go with the deep man, finally adjusted to the ball and came back. That was Hughes on the catch, right? Yes. Colin Hughes gets outside. Gets it down to about the eight yard line. Brought down by Mossing and, and Pennington. It was Huner. Uh, Hughes. Hughes. Schrock. Open in the back of the end zone. Oh, and probably picked one of the three receivers he tried to go to. Jordan that time. Weber. He, and he had somebody, I don't know who it was, running along the, the end zone, the back zone of the end zone that was wide I, open. I wanted to say Jared Marks. And that could have been. Actually, he was running himself back into coverage. It was one of those that uh, Jared Weber, uh, or Jordan Weber, hadn't gone up for it, then maybe it might have went right to Marks. <coughs> we got a timeout. Timeout Evergreen. Evergreen takes their final timeout. <coughs> Boy, I can't believe how cold it got, Stanley. Weiner. Oh. It's autumn. It Rich. was so hot last Saturday. 
Last Friday, Saturday. It was. Sunday. It was. And now, Monday, and now, and, it's, and now it's 50 degrees. It's October. Whew. It's Ohio. I think it's more than less than 50. Paul, you got a thermometer up there? You can see yeah, your bright. I, I guarantee you, Paul's up there where it's cold. He's we're cold. in here where we're comfortable. And we should comment uh, this lovely new facility here at Evergreen. Oh, great. Huge. Uh, we were talking before that 1.9, 1. 1. 1 point something million dollars. If you haven't been up here, and I've been coming to Evergreen for a number of years, and it's just the improvements to the facilities in, in, in this school district in the last five to six years, uh, Beautiful new uh, eight-lane all-weather track. Lovely facilities here. We, we've got plenty of room on the on the uh, northern sidelines. Uh, new bleachers both sides. It's it's says a lot for this community of a school district that really has no community in it. Yep. And fumble. I I'm not too sure what went on there. Whether Hughes lost the handoff, Schrock. It was. It looked like Hughes looked behind him as he went by. It was like a <laughs> fumble, fumble, Ruski? fumble Ruski. No, you know? no, no, no. <laughs> I guarantee you, Mark Emmons does not have do fumble, fumble Ruski, Ruski in his in his repertoire. He doesn't. And, he didn't didn't go to uh, the Earl Bruce School of Football. Huh? Second fumble of the night. Both of them lost by the Wauseon Indians. <coughs> and that one could that have been a turnover of seven points right there in what has been a fairly well-played first half of football here. Wasan scored early, and uh, Evergreen has shut him down. First and ten on the 18. Let's see if Evergreen tries anything here. They'll be content to run out the clock. McCready. And they will give it to McCready, and I think with Alex Emmons wraps him up right around the ankles, and he's not going anywhere. Loss of about one, two. I'm going to call it one. <coughs> the chain gang has called it about two, but uh, <laughs> hey, they're close to the action we are. And Spikes the football as they're out of timeouts. True core do. Spikes the ball, third down. I'll tell you, that says something about uh, Coach Tatekin right there, that he says, I want to I want to show my ball club something right here. I'm not going to. We're uh, not going to give up. We're not, we're not going into halftime and be happy just to be down uh, 14 to nothing. We're going to try one big play here. And that's one of those things you have to do with a, with a young ball club. You look up here, a sprinkling of uh, underclassmen throughout this roster. A lot of the, a lot of the players uh, will be back for this. And, and Todd's trying to uh, put a little message here to his ball club, and we'll see what happens. Man in motion, stop and go pump, picked off. And I don't think he caught it inbounds. And yeah. the referee says he did. Yes, he does. First turnover for the Vikings. With seven seconds to go at the 40, 42 yard line. <coughs> Ooh, Red Sox leading five to one. I like the, the score inning. you gave it earlier. Seven nothing. Yeah, I like that one. <laughs> well, the Indians helped the officials get a football in. Well, you just that take ball, a knee, or you? Uh, it looks you like it looks like they're not. Oh, I don't know. I would almost try that play once again to Mitch Huner. Double reverse. Marks. Jared Marks. Running hard, Whoa. and gets smacked after picking up about six yards. He was met, met out there by Josh Burrows, and uh, Josh says that's far enough. That's the end of the half. Wasion leading 14 to nothing, and uh, a good, quick, hard-fought ball game here so far this half. We'll be back with some of Stanley's stats right before the kickoff for the second half. All right, we're back. And uh, we've got about a minute and a half yet before kickoff. Stanley, 
It's good having you up here tonight. I hope you're enjoying yourself. How about oh, some of your fine statistics? Well, first of all, we'll look for the Evergreen Vikings on the ground there. 12 rushes, 15 yards in the air. Uh, Derek Trucor, 4 of 9, 1 intercepted, 21 yards. They've been penalized five times for a total of 30 yards, have not coughed the football up. On uh, the Wauseon side of the night, uh, 26 rushes for 198 yards. They're gross on the night. Uh, running 2 of uh, 6 in the air for... Uh, Derek Schrock, one intercepted, 30 yards in the air. Leading rushers for the Wauseon Indians, Colin Hughes with 14 carries for 66. Ryan Huner, a pair of carries for 16. And the work coach, Mitch Huner, with uh, nine carries, 113 yards. Of course, he got 67 of those on one big lug to start this ball game that set the tone for the Wauseon Indians. But Evergreen has come back and played quite well here. Uh, the defense is shoring up. Uh, they've, they've given up a couple of... of uh, plays, but nothing really major. They've been able to uh, pull the two turnovers. Wassey on Gildy, as, as we mentioned uh, during the first half, the one on the punt, and then that big one down here that could have changed the complexion of this ball game had they gone in with a 21 to nothing lead, coughing the ball up inside the 20-yard line. And but that uh, we'll have to watch the replay of that just see, to figure out how the ball did get coughed up. See if you'd have brought the replay equipment. Yeah. Well, instead of Tammy. All right. Bigger van. <laughs> Can we get a bigger INTV van? Oh, no, I buy those myself. I was going to say. So I you, pay for that myself, so no. You we buy don't those? Need, oh, yes, I have to. Corner. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> tax write-off. <laughs> Kramer, you don't know what a tax write-off is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that LASIK surgery you had was a real write-off. I know, yeah. Yeah, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Wasion has completed their warm-ups down below us. The Evergreen Vikings on the far side huddled around their head coach, uh, Todd Teakin. Uh, Mark Emmons, if uh, you know the man better than I do, what did he tell his ball club here at halftime? Well, I think he wants them to keep that intensity up, playing some good defense. Uh, wants a little more output from his uh, offense, though, I would, I would say, is what he was uh, telling the boys. But I don't like to guess what Mark does have in a, on his mind at times. Sometimes he and I don't see eye to eye. I say, well, throw that big bomb. And he says, no, I'm content <laughs> with yeah. three seconds yeah. to go in the half. I'm content to go to the locker room. That's why you have that press pass, and he has a and state he championship. Has, yes. yeah. <laughs> He's got the state championship ring, and I get a... You get, a, you, get, you, get that, you get that little jersey on the sidelines that goes press, and you get to keep it after the year, there too. There you go. Clay Simpkins to kick off, start the second half. Line drive on the ground. Squib picked up by... Uh, Garrett May. Yep. And May with a pretty good return. I'm not too sure whether that was planned or not, Whether, uh, but it, it did look like that was the plan they had, kicking it down, and May with a nice return, uh, and that's probably the best field position with the exception of the turnovers that the Evergreen Vikings have had to start a drive here tonight as we begin the second half. Brad Leffler at center. Corey Trucor at quarterback. Chad Mossing. Is that Mossing? Yes, yeah, straight ahead. Ran with some authority on that mm -hmm. one, Stan. Gain of about... Uh, Four? Yeah. Three or four? Long three, short four. The gentleman with the stake would put it down, and he, he does. Give him four. Yep. Second down and six. From All right on the 39. And I'm abusing the equipment here. Sorry, Rich. That's all right. Mossing again. Had to pick his way through a few defenders that time. Terry Lynn on the stop for the Indians. Gets it across the 45, just short of the 40, or the 40, just short of the 41. Actually a nice spot on that one. I would have marked him right on the 40. They, mar they moved it out almost to the 41-yard uh, line. So uh, it's a long four, short five, and a partridge in a pear tree. Get ready for that screen out here. Mossing taken down by Ryan Huner and Colin Hughes. 
Brings up third down, be fourth, and, fourth and three. Four of ten for Mr. Trucor, 23 yards. And what has been a fairly Lucas. effective weapon for uh, the green. Pennington gets off a kick. Colin Hughes, whoosh. Handles it and gets handled right there by Steve Creaky. Creaky got down there and nice and wrapped him up. He was tempting fate just a little bit there fielding that one, but uh, he's back there all by himself too that time. Wasian, I'm gonna predict, is gonna get to one of those punts tonight. They are very close. They've been close almost every time. But First and 10 at the 29. Ooh. Oh, oh, labeled that time. Colin Hughes tattooed by, is that uh, McCready? Is that four? Yep. Mm -hmm. No Jordan game. McCready met him right at the hole and said, hello. Good form tackle, head up, put the grill right into the numbers and pulled him down. Hughes sweeps right. A good tackle over there that time. 55 in there. That's uh, Josh Burroughs. Yeah. Well, Todd Deacon must have slipped his boys a, a couple of cups of coffee at halftime because they've really come out here pumped They're up. They're awake and, right and now. And that's a yard loss that time. Just penetrated the offensive line, putting that defensive surge on. Inside, Jared Marks spins. Good, strong run that time, and way to react to the, the spin. He, he, he turned, wrapped the football up well, wasn't going to turn it over. Marks with his second carry of the night. Corey Trucor in on the tackle. They'll mark it at the 36-yard line. Gain of eight. Wasian to punt for the first time tonight. Um... I, I believe. To, I think you're probably right. And oh, I found his first half. Clay Simpkins. It had gone east on me. Back to punt for the Indians. He'd been out with a ankle or a foot injury, and Michael Thompson handled the duty well. Mossing calls for the fair catch inside the 30. First down, Vikings on their own 30 is where they marked it. We want to thank the Delta Fraternal Order, Order of Eagles. Well, that's a tough one to get out in a hurry, you know. Wasion American Legion Post 265, Wood Trucking, Perfumes and More, St. Casper Catholic Church for all they do for INTV. I think it was that Mossing. Mossing. Yep. Tommy Paul missed a crackback block on that one, or that one may have gone a little further than it looked. Mossing, nevertheless, running hard. Picks up one. Second down, nine. On the Vikings, 31. Mossing in motion. Still got it, looking downfield. He's gonna have to throw this one away. Now he'll run out of bounds. Uh, see if they give him any Rodriguez yardage. Rodriguez runs him out of bounds, Jeremy Rodriguez. And they're gonna mark him with just about a yard gain that time. He slid in just in front of the down marker. Pick up a yard. Third and eight coming at the 32-yard line. Wasion has uh, tended to read that a little bit, that 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 high pump fake and then then the rollout. And Trucor has had a chance to throw it, and now he'll throw it again on a slant. And Ooh. did he hang on? No, nope. it rolled out the backside. Williams. Williams, incomplete, fourth down. Jason Williams was just slightly behind him, I think, on the slant. 
in those. Once again, you said you'd walked on the field. You said it was uh, firm, firm but slick. I mean, is it? Uh, it well, you, your cleats wouldn't dig in too much. And now, with no pressure on, this is probably the worst punt of the night. And grabbed there and down by Tommy Paul. Well, maybe Wasion has figured out the secret to this is, is don't, don't, don't rush, rush at him. That adrenaline, adrenaline doesn't shoot in. And mm -hmm. Our co degrees in psychology. <laughs> First and ten for the Wauseon Indians here with 7.09 to play in our third quarter. Wauseon on top, 14 to nothing. The line of scrimmage will be the 44-yard line of the Wauseon Indians in the white uniforms and the red pants. Schrock brings them to the line of scrimmage and hands Marks. off for the motion man. Jared Marks. Running hard across midfield. Good block out there, Colin Price. Second down. Kind of an extra three, four yards. Give him six. Bring up second and four. Mark's, yeah. had, Mark's had nice, uh, his last carry to end the first half yeah. was uh, double double figures at least, wasn't well, I, it? Yeah, there was, I gave him six. Oh. It might have been 16. Yeah. Handoff up the middle, Huner. Stopped out there by Brad Leffler. But a first down. Forty-five yard line of the Evergreen Vikings. Tenth carry of the night for Mitch gives him 118 yards. 6:15 to go, third quarter. Wasion trying to grind something out here. They had a couple of drives over 10 plays in the first half and resulted in no points. And Huner once again this time stub, Mitch stood up. Huner met by the entire left side of that line over there. 74, Brad Leffler, Burroughs, yep. No gain. Corey Robertson trots off. Sounds like they've got a pretty good football game going on over in Archibald. It's what, like 21-14 at halftime? That was our last report. Oh, well, there's the flag. The back judge didn't throw that one, Stanley. Didn't he? No. You got an opening on your your old timer softball team. You might want to hire this kid. He can pick signals from center field, and he can definitely hit the cutoff man. <laughs> he needs to work on his hat wear, though. Jesper, Jesper per Parnovic type it, it, hat there. Hey, yep. He does look like a detached observer back there. <laughs> Probably the nicest guy in the world. We're going to pick on somebody up here tonight. Rich is tired of me picking on him. Straight ahead, Mitch Huner. Grab down fighting. there. And, and there's a there. flag. Yep. Okay, take by the flag on the play. Corey he, threw Corey in on the tackle. Got a hold on. Or did, well, now wait a minute. Now Evergreen's upset again. Face mask. Face mask against the Viking. So he picks up one. That was Mitch, correct? Yes. Five yard, inadvertent. The third face mask penalty by that official. Yes. And it's a first and ten. Move the ball to the 32 yard line. Colin Hughes gets a block, gets a corner, ran out of bounds by Corey Trucor. Got a nice push, his offensive line got good motion that time. Uh, pretty good block on the outside by Jordan Weber. Pick up of eight, second down, two. Gain of eight. Just inside the 25 almost to the 24. Justin Rodriguez leads him out of the huddle. Mitch Huner met 
almost at the line of scrimmage. Leffler again on the stick. Going to be short of the first down. Brings up third and one. You see the power eye. It's been good to them. Got them two, two, two first downs in the first half. Just the regular eye. Second back through Hughes. And this Pops ball is up. loose. Picked up by Alex Emmons. Covered by yeah. Enough for the first down. The first time the Indians have coughed it up tonight and not lost it. Mark the ball at the 21 yard line. Yep. Inside marks. Tried, Tried to, to dance out of there, but uh, chopped down. Marks the ball carrier, tackled by Beaverset. McCready was at his feet that time, forced him to go uh, laterally, and then uh, the defense showed up. Give him a yard. Second and nine at the 20 yard line. Ninth play of this drive coming up here for the Indians. Ryan Huner running hard, but again, a host of Huner green clad Vikings showing up. Beaverson with the stick. I've been impressed with the Viking defense tonight. They have especially swarmed. this they have, second half. They have swarmed very well coming out here in the second half. Now you're not seeing uh, the Vikings one one player trying to make the tackle. It's uh, two to three different yeah. players at and a I, time. And I thought last week Montpelier got to the ball okay, but this, this Viking defense is swarming much better here tonight. Stop right now. I think it was Mitch Huner. Yep. Every time they say Huner, they, they say Leffler right after it on the tackle. Fourth down and uh, th a long three. Long threes inside the 15. Timeout, Wasion. Timeout, Wasion. It's their first timeout of the half. At the 2 228 mark of the third quarter. Coach Emmons. You, you think he's going to go for it, or uh, we've yet to see. Clay Simpkins test that leg for uh, a field goal this year. We almost got to see one in the Napoleon overtime. Oh, that's right. That's right. I, I was there for that one. Uh, yeah, he does have a fine leg, and we mentioned early in the ball game that it's, it's the snapper and the holder, too. There is just a wave to breeze here. Not enough to move the American flag, the POW MIA flag getting just a little movement on the yep. flag staff here at the western end of Piper Field. And I don't see anybody with I don't see the kicking a number. kicking tee. Nope. Derek Schrock, quarterback, calling the play in the huddle. Schrock, Schrock rolling. It's going to be a little, oh! Price. <laughs> You told, what Colin, were you talking Colin about Price, some of that? <laughs> uh, Colin Price got away with that a bump, a bump, a bump, and it was over his head, and it was the old uncatchable. Yep. That was the first pass attempt of the second half for the Wauseon Indians. It falls incomplete and turns it over at the 14-yard line. 2.21 to go, third quarter. So an 11-play drive results in no Indian points. No huddle. Vikings come in off the sidelines. 
McCready takes the pitch and is nailed in the backfield. I don't know whether that was 50 Andy Ammons or. Broken up by Ammons. And that's, that's a, a about a four yard loss. Well, it's six yard loss wow. according to the scoreboard. I would, uh, it looks like, well, it couldn't. He's Are, standing inside. Yeah, he is standing inside the tent. That mossing? A little bit of a hole that time for mossing. And I got to apologize right now, Rich. I just looked at my, my sheet here, and I've been identifying the Evergreen quarterback all night as Derek Trucor. Derek is a freshman. The senior is uh, number 10, Corey Trucor. Corey Trucor, yeah. yes. One ten to go, third quarter. Third down, 11. Big down for the Vikings. Corey just about steps out of bounds, zings it. Good job, Corey Trucor, that time. Kept his head, kept his feet, and was able to launch that one. Uh, probably not one of the great decisions. He could have thrown that up the sidelines. Yeah, where, I was going to say where he threw it, he threw it back into some coverage. And, and threw it into the field of play. It's one of those they're not going to call grounding if you gun that ball right into that huge mass of humanity down there headed by Coach Emmons. Uh, but uh, he did a nice job of, of saving a safety and, and giving them a chance to punt, which has been a pretty good weapon for him. Lucas Pennington. Once again, the pressure comes, and this time the ball spins upfield and will take a reverse Goes bounce back. heads east and will be downed at the Evergreen 40. So once again, that Wasi on Indian defense. At the Evergreen 40, one yard line. Ever since the five minute mark of the first quarter, it's been a defensive effort by both teams. Pitch to Ryan, Ryan Hunter. Hunter. No gain. Corey Norris runs in with the play. In comes Andrew Roop. And we're down to one more play here for the Wauseon Indians in what's been a very quick third quarter, Rich. Still 14 to nothing. The Wauseon Indians on top. Brian Huner cuts back. Good leverage on the outside. Ooh, he squirted through there for about two more yards. Yeah. First hit there by Trevor Poole. He pulled out of his tackle, but then the rest of the uh, Vikings there to close the, the gap. That's the end of the third quarter. The end of the third quarter. Wasion leads 14 to nothing. Their second, third possession of the half. What is this, Stanley? Their third possession? Yeah. Once again, we want to thank the following donors for providing funding to INTV so that you can enjoy these contests. The Trinity Lutheran Church, the Wasion Homecoming Committee, Wasion Athletic Boosters, Wasion American Legion Post 265, Delta Fraternal Order of Eagles, Wood Trucking, Perfumes and More, St. Casper Catholic Church, Wasion Machine and Manufacturing, Wayland Realty and Auction, Mr. Mike Murray, Sterling Mechanical LLC, Heating, Air Conditioning and Plumbing. We don't need the air conditioning tonight. Hallett Hall Noggle, Attorneys at Law, Bill's Sports Center, Lee's Body Shop, Don's Automotive Group, and Winchester's Restaurant and Saloon. We may have to stop there and get a hot bowl of chili tonight. Will you join us there for a hot bowl of chili tonight? Stanley? Where's that? Winchester's uh, Restaurant and Saloon. Corner of 
County Road H in 109. Know the location and know the owner. And I missed the ball carrier. I think it was Colin Hughes. We'll Number see 24, who. Colin Hughes gets up off the bottom. Brings up fourth down. By Lepler, fourth down. And two. Fourth down, two. To start the fourth quarter. Pitch. Uh oh, and open. Colin Price. And Colin Hughes to Colin Price. 32 yard touchdown pass, halfback touchdown pass. And the Indians score early in the fourth here on a little trickery. Did him to snap. Colin Hughes to hold. Simpkins to kick. It's good. Kick is up and good. And the Indians take a 21 to nothing lead at the 11-17 mark of the fourth quarter. It's been a dry spell. Four plays, 40 yards on that one. And uh, you almost have to tribute, uh, give tribute on that one to the Evergreen defense even though they got scored on, it, they have forced Wasion, who came in here tonight, probably a, a strong favorite, to resort to a play like that. Yes. I mean, they've, they've slugged at him. They've, uh, with the they exception took the of running attack away. With the exception of that first play from scrimmage, they, they have acquitted themselves quite well, and, and that's, that's one of those moral victories aren't all that great, but that's one of those that you can tell your ball club, look, we've, we've slugged it on all night, and we got... It took a play like that to score on us, and you could tell right away that the Price was Price was had fled by about 10 yards when that ball was put in the air. They had no hope of getting back, and it was a well-executed play. You have to compliment the Wasio oh, yes. Indians on that because uh, and Hughes Hughes put just enough air under that he, when he first he launched that. Line it, when, when, he, when he first let go of that, I went, he's open, but he's not going to hit him. It's a good good snag out there by Colin Price. Clay Simpkins to kick. McCready and Mossing deep for the Vikings. Goes to McCready. Hands off to Salisbury. Mm -hmm. Ryan Salisbury on the reverse. Giving it to him on the 28 or the 27, Stanley? I think it's the 27. 27. First and 10 Vikings. Jason Williams split wide left. Motion Mossing. Pop pass to Pennington. Gain of about three. Yep, giving three on that one. Fifth completion of the night for uh, Corey True Corey True Corey Corey Corey. Corey. Yes. Move the ball out to the thirty. Just short, but we're going to call it even. 10.37 to play in this ball game here. In what's been a well-paced ball game, we're just a uh, quarter past the 9 o'clock hour. Oh, nice catch. And he Come did haul it Jason. in. Williams, nice Jason. catch. Jason Williams. It's where the underthrow worked to perfection on that one as Jason recognized it and came back for it. 18 on that pickup. Little offensive spark in the Vikings here. 
Chad Mossing straight ahead. Going to burrow across midfield, marking just across the 49-yard line and giving him three on that. Second down, seven for the Vikings. 9.45 to go in the contest. The Wauseon Indians lead 21 to nothing. McCready trying to get outside, stopped by Hassel. PH on the roll. Tammy just saying it's 42 to 14 now. I find that surprising. Brings up third down, long five on the Indians 47 yard line. True car back being rushed. Throws it, throws it away. Two cars pass incomplete. Send it for Williams. Fourth and five at the 47, down 21 points. Uh, see if Coach Tatekin decides that. Uh, I got a, I would almost think he's going to go for it. What do you think? Corey Trucor calling the play in the huddle. Evergreen going to call timeout. He wants to talk about it, so. Eight forty six of the fourth quarter. What else you got coming up on INTV? I read your little blurps on the uh, little whatever, cable. Whatever Tammy says we're going to do, that's what we're going to do, you know, so. Uh, well, we've got a very interesting interview coming up uh, in regards to Saris Garden, their new construction facility where they're going to give us a tour and um, we're going to have that on INTV. That's scheduled sometime next week. Yeah, we're going to we're going to film it sometime next week, and uh, Tammy then will schedule that. But can hardly wait to get that interview in. True car, Corey fakes bubble screen. Williams. Nice comeback, Williams. And he will pick up the first down. The ball came loose, loose. but I think they're going to call the back it down. judge. 10-20 vision has it, and he says Mr. He was Williams down was right down. There. Coach Emmons, I don't know whether he was flashing in the defensive signs or he was just asking. I don't think that's a defense. That wasn't the no. defensive sign? No. I see. Unless, unless he's got a mea culpa defense. <laughs> I formation. Moss. Ooh. That's a crunch. Ooh. Hello. Met out there by Justin, Justin Rodriguez. Justin Rodriguez. Smoke. No gain. Hello. My name is Justin. What's yours? Pudge. I don't think he's a pudge. He's a, <laughs> that's what they call him, pudge? Oh, okay. No one calls him Justin. <laughs> Corey Trucor. Almost a hold. He let go of him in time. And good decision that time by whoever was closing for the Wauseon Indians to don't let him run out of bounds. Him, yeah. Don't tack 15 on right here. You're playing well. Gain of about one. Brings up third and nine. Third down eight. <laughs> 
727. 7.27 to play in this ball game here. From Pfeiffer Field on County Road 6, Northern Fulton County. Trucor right in his face comes the defense. Ooh, and did Mitch, no, I don't know whether he, the, the, I looked like he scraped that off the grass, didn't he? Well, he was also OB. Oh. They went once, they'll go twice. Fourth down, long eight, according to the scoreboard. Seems to me they've been successful maybe once out of well, they got the last four one. times. They're on a roll, just like the Colorado Rockies. And that's a roll, bub. <laughs> Pressure off the backside. He's rolling the wrong way this time. If he can square himself up, and he'll just throw it away. Uh, is that like spiking the football on fourth down? Same difference. No, because he, he gave himself, he gave his team a chance to run to those, and, and there's nothing you can make out of that. If you throw that ball back across the middle, rolling to your left like that, there's more guys out there in white shirts than there are in green, and it's just luck if it hits something that's uh, wearing green and gold. Well, there you go. So he probably, did, he probably did the right thing right there. First and 10, 7-12 to go, fourth quarter. And as a quarterback, you want to fire that gun anyway, so you, you, I'm not going to get hit with a... So Mr. Trucor got it out of bounds, or got it. Got rid of it. Yes. Jared Marks, Marks nailed by McCready. Just about, did he get back to the line of scrimmage? Um, I think we'll credit him with a line of scrimmage return, yes. The down marker did not move. Second and ten. Mitch Huner in the backfield. Colin Hughes. There's somebody moved. Somebody flinched. The umpire saw that one. Oh, we. Center called the center for flexing. Ah, simulating a snap. Well, as cold as it is, he's probably his hands were just shaking. That's all standard. Sure. Sure. Second down, 15. Straight ahead, I think Mitch Huner is eaten alive, though, by the Viking defense. You the ball carrier, tackled by Leffler. Third down. Third down in about 14. Mm-hmm. I think that's Ryan. Looks like it. Ryan Huner. Ryan Huner. Here's the ball carrier, tackle by Burrow. It's a back crossed the original line of scrimmage. Makes it fourth down and about eight. Clay Simpkins in to punt for the Indians. Chad Mossing is back there for Evergreen to receive this punt. Good snap. End over end punt. And it will just continue to trickle along. Blown dead by the official at the 27 yard line of the Evergreen Vikings. Let's go, Brad! Yeah! 
4.49 to play in the ball game. And the breeze beginning to, boy, I tell you, Paul McDonald up there doing yeoman duty as a cameraman. And Doug Hughes, at least Doug knew enough to go get some sweatpants to put on over his shorts that he started out in. <laughs> no comment. No comment. No sir. comment. I can't outrun either one of them. Empty house. The out cut. Ooh, oh, Williams. Williams had that one on his shoulder. Also on the coverage. We'll see if the Vikings have totally abandoned the run right here. Mossing, Mossing has, has shown the, the willingness to take the ball up inside. McCready just has nothing. Every time he's tried it tonight, Wasion has had to spy right with him. Both teams retain two timeouts as we look at the scoreboard here at the western end of Piper Field. Tommy Paul. Nice to throw him. and close to the first down marker. Hasso on the stop. Timeout for the measurement, I would think. I'll wait and see what they. And the officials studied under that. Decided we're not going to take. It's cold. It's 21 to nothing. It's cold. It's a first down. <laughs> Looks good it's to homecoming. me. Yeah, it's It's the way it should be officiated. True Quick card. Pass. Nice gun again. Nice catch and nice. Mossing. Mossing afterwards. Nice. Uh, Little yards yak. after the catch. Little yak right there. He slipped that first defender. Tried to hit him. And he got by him and picked up about another 13. 10. Yeah. First and 10 on the Indian 42. Evergreen on the move. Show a little urgency in their steps. Good pressure up the middle. He's beyond the line He's of scrimmage. Beyond the line of scrimmage. And here comes the flag. McCready made a diving effort after it. <laughs> and I'm not too sure what the penalty is in high school for this. I would imagine it's down in dis down in uh, in distance. Five yard penalty, loss of down. And yep, the flex from the spot where he threw it. Second down, and what would you say, 15, 16? Should be 15. Because if he In other words, it was a six-yard penalty. Where he violated is at the line of scrimmage. <laughs> oh, pressure by nice the Nice escape ability right there. And he's got some room, and he's also got an open receiver. Touchdown to Salisbury. Ryan Salisbury, 46-yard touchdown. Completion by Corey Trucor. Salisbury just kept drifting down, and Trucor, with that escape ability, was able to step to the outside, and then Corey put a lot of air under it. And let Ryan run under it. Forty-six yards in the air on that one. Out of the hold of Jordan McCready, Corey Trucor to attempt the extra point. Down. Conventional kicker. It's good. A good reward right there for a game Evergreen Viking Ball Club. Oh, they, were, yes. they were rewarded with that one. Uh, 
They stayed, they played. Well, they came out in somewhat of a hurry-up type offense and uh, just went to the air almost exclusively. And it worked. 126 yards for two court here tonight, 10 of 21. One intercepted. Stanley, we gotta get you a, gotta get you a Wasian, uh, what? Vester. 21. Jacket or something. You've done such a good job for INTV. Always enjoy doing some state playoff games with you in basketball. Onside? I think so. Boom, nice. Nice bounce. Nice field. Hasso. Did you watch that finish of the Purdue Ohio State game last Saturday night? Yeah. I happened to be there. I see. Yeah. Ten seconds to go. Purdue finally scores and then down, what was it, 20, 23 to 7, kick on onside kick. The gentleman I continue to watch Saturday afternoon football with responded, Huner, re re responded that to that play with, <laughs> he wasn't. Deep, with deep religious vile. <laughs> A gain of four, long four, maybe five. They gave him five on the scoreboard. And we will then in our Gives stats. At 16 for 130 for Mitch. And he'll, oh, no. nice hole. Mitch is going to add to that total. Mossy, Mossy won't get him. Won't get him. 51 yards. That's uh, almost a replay of his first Initial touchdown. Initial touchdown. Yeah. On the second play from scrimmage for the Indians. Snap. Placement. Kick is good. Three oh one to play. And just that quickly the Wasion Indians counter the Evergreen Viking they score. Answered that long pass play with a big run of their own. Boy, it's hard to believe that this is the game of the season and, uh, two regular season games to go it it's is gonna be playoff time coming up unbelievable and really the first football feeling Easy. night yeah I think well no there was uh, the last time I was over here the evergreen Archbowl ball game uh, had a nice had a nice feel to it about three weeks ago but, uh, well, part of it is when you start in the middle of football August, season. Yeah. <laughs> You're not still playing softball, are you, Stanley? No. <laughs> okay. I was going to say, we used to butt heads way back when. I think we used that term and description of each other a couple of times. <laughs> Squib kick. Gets away from him. 
McCready ate alive. I'll tell you what. Jordan, Alex Emmons? Yes. Jordan McCready is going to enjoy that 120 degree water tonight in the shower room because he <laughs> has taken a licking. Good coverage just across the 15 yard line of the Vikings. 2.55 to go in the game. Be interesting to see right now with three minutes to play. Does Todd T can uh, continue to put the ball in the air? I think he does. I think he, he wants to prove something. I'm trying to think who the Vikings have left on their schedule. And just as I say that, McCready. they get a nice opening. And McCready wanting to run and gets upfield and takes out several members. Not in uniform of the Wauseon Indians. He took out Jill. <laughs> Is that all? I think he took out Jill. Rogacki, our uh, trainer. See if he gets taped the next time. Just short. Give him nine. Second down. There you go. The down marker got changed. Corey Trucor takes the snap. Going to get the first down. Oh. I think surprised Mossing. I think Mossing was getting ready to was block for Getting him. ready to block. Yeah, and I, he was setting his feet trying to come back on, it, on his defender. And Corey decided... I'm going to gun this one. Still 2.41 to play in this. Evergreen has acquitted themselves well. They haven't, they haven't thrown in the towel here tonight against the Wauseon Ball Club that we know they can hit. Wauseon's rushing offense right now, last week, what was it, 500 and some yards. They've been held to 310 on the ground tonight in 46 attempts. Leading rusher, 181 yards, Mitch Huner, and he's been helped out by two huge runs. Huge runs. Corey Trucor looking around. And he's got a first down and more. And will run out of bounds. The 35 yard line. Trucor, our stand for nice pick up for the 40 yard line. He probably doesn't, probably doesn't remember him, but he's doing a good impression of Fran Tarkington tonight. Yeah. They marked him clear back to 35. Wow. Still an 11-yard pickup. Yeah. That was probably the biggest rush of the night for the Vikings. Gets them to 48 yards on the ground net. McCready going to try it again, and this time, a nice little move. St steps and still, still and he'll going. pick about eight or nine. He's finally worn down that defense. I think Ryan Huner had to make the stop. From this cornerback position. He showed some nice, nice little moves on that one. A little stutter step. He was up second down and two from their 43 yard line. Pass a little high. Thrown to Chad Mossing. You know, if I couldn't get a hold of you tonight, I was almost going to have thought about calling Chad's mom and see if she would do a game with us. Jackie. Mm -hmm. Jackie Matika Mossing. She's done some basketball with us. Chad's got some athletic genes. In I was going to say, yep. Mm -hmm. Still the leading scorer over at Bowling Green State University. Men's or women's. And McCready stood up. Oh. It was, it was Terry Lind, I think, on the stop. Another evergreen fourth down attempt here. They could time out. They have one they have one on the scoreboard. And I'm I think out that was it. Yep. They've well, Rich, it's been fun. Always is. You've drugged me some pretty nice spots over the years. <laughs> <laughs> Always enjoy going to 
the old stomping grounds at Bowling Green State University. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the old barn. We've had some nice nights up there on the roof of the old barn. Just us, the pigeons, and a couple of <laughs> vermin. Still one of the great places to watch basketball. It's just, there's just an atmosphere there. High school basketball especially, it just, it, it feels like tournament. Andy Ross says it's a great place to watch a high school game. Of course, I think and he's I, making fun of my Falcons when but, he says that. But it's true. It just, uh, it's a college atmosphere and, oh, oh he drops incomplete. It. And Pat, pass to Williams on a quick bubble type screen. And that will probably sign off with 103 seconds to go in this one. I did it to you again. Yeah, you did it again. In uh, Wasion, see what Mark Emmons sends out there. I think I'd give, I'd, I'd give my twos the chance. Keep it between the tackles. Yep, we got them. A lot of white jerseys. Who does the tribe have coming up next week? Uh, some team, be? some team west of us, of the Indians. Right along the railroad tracks. Along the road, and it's uh, it sort of bypasses Pettisville. Mm -hmm. Who was the ball carrier? Forty-one. I'm no, I don't think it was forty-one, because Jacobs. Uh, an end. Didn't have a good angle when he went into there. You know, it could have been Reynolds, mm -hmm. 45. Yep, yep, yep. I think you're right. Reynolds again. And a nice, just continues to burrow along and burn clock. I call him the bus. The bus? Yeah, he reminds me of... The bus. Comes out. Jacob Westmeyer brings in the play. One of our INTV boys. Thirty-five seconds to go. Probably the last one here at Pfeiffer Field tonight. Forty-six. Travis Reynolds again. Reynolds, the ball carrier. Back up by two core. Hey. You know, that last ball carrier, I think, was Rashley. Was it 45, Rashley? Yes. The, the time before. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But it doesn't make a difference 19 right seconds. now because the Wasion Indians will move. They're to not even going to snap. Five and three, five and one, more importantly, in the NWOL. And they come here tonight and take care of business on homecoming night at Evergreen. And uh, the teams will move out to midfield, shake hands in this one, and it was a, it was a well-played ball game. Very good contest. Uh, you know, it looked like it was going to be a runaway for the Indians as on their second play from scrimmage. A 64-yard jaunt put in there by Mitch Huner. And uh, came back six minutes later at the five-minute mark. Seven-yard run by Colin Hughes. Um, then we was no scoring until the fourth quarter. They had the halfback pass, Colin Hughes to Colin Price for 32 yards. Then the Vikings got on the board. At the 3:47 mark of the fourth with a 46-yard touchdown pass. Nice pass to Ryan Salisbury. But the Indians countered less than a minute later at the 301 mark with a 51 yard run by Mitch Huner. So, uh, Stanley, I want to thank you for coming over and helping us tonight. Always fun. Just call me a little sooner next time. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you even had left work already by the time I called. Well, don't tell my boss that. No, well, I would, he doesn't watch INTV, he's the only one. But I want to thank Paul McDonald. Fine job up there, Paul. Uh, up there in the cold. Tammy McGowrath coming over here, keeping us straight. And uh, Stan Cruz, fine job tonight. And we hope you've enjoyed with Wasian coming away with a victory 28 to 7 over Evergreen. Good night.